in London Plus tonight, the drug addicts who killed their baby should children from heroin homes be taken into care, from the band to beat London's juggernauts and the record rowers along the Thames. Join us later. This is BBC One. The six o'clock news from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. Good evening. At the home of America's astronauts in Houston, President Reagan is at this moment leading his nation in mourning. He's been meeting the families of the people they call the fallen heroes, the astronauts who died when the shuttle exploded. From the sea where it fell, huge pieces of Challenger are now being brought ashore. And in Texas tonight, the president and his people are paying their tributes. Mr. Reagan's been telling them that despite the disaster, the space program goes on. We'll be going over live to Houston in a few moments. And tonight's other headlines, two heroin addicts who killed their 15-month-old baby with a drugs overdose have been found guilty of manslaughter. Andrew Russell was sent to jail for 10 years, his wife Marion for seven. They'd deliberately given their baby heroin substitute on her dummy. The South African president has said he's ready to release Nelson Mandela, but only if Russia and Angola release some of their prisoners. The people of Haiti are celebrating the end of the hated Duvalier dynasty, but President Baby Doc has broadcast to say that he is still in charge. 10,000 people have gathered in Houston, Texas tonight, the home of the American space program, to pay homage to the seven astronauts who died on Tuesday in the shuttle Challenger. The bereaved families, scientists, politicians and diplomats from around the world, led by President Reagan, are there to pay their last respects in a service which is being broadcast across the American nation. Even the search at Cape Canaveral for clues to the cause of the tragedy has been halted, the first respite in the investigation for the 40 minutes that the service lasts. A service during the course of which the President will promise that America will forge ahead with her exploration in space. He's been telling them, sometimes when we reach for the stars, we fall short, but we press on despite the pain. Well, we'll be going over live to Texas for the service. But first, Michael Sullivan describes the scene in Houston. Only President Reagan could lead the nation in this ritual expression of grief. President Kennedy died violently in a Texas city 23 years ago. Now the state is once again the theater of America's sorrow and dismay at a national tragedy. This time, the president joins the mourners in the most elaborate of all the memorial services held throughout the country over the past few days. He took his place for the service with the families of the dead, whom he'd met in private soon after landing in Houston. Millions saw the dreadful end of Challenger. Millions are watching the memorial service for those who died in it. Few deaths could have been as spectacular, as public, as poignant as those of the seven who ended their lives in a ball of fire and steam. Their faces, smiling with pride and anticipation of their adventure, are already etched more deeply into the public memory than any of those who preceded them. Deepest of all, the face of Krista McAuliffe, the teacher and mother who rode in Challenger as the representative of ordinary Americans. A day to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans. Yes, I can hear you. To share the grief that we all feel, and perhaps in that yes. sharing to find the strength. Uh, the to person bear now our speaking is the President of the United States, and I suggest we cut straight to him to as soon as we. Of hope. Our nation's loss is first a profound personal loss to the family and the friends and the loved ones of our shuttle astronauts. To those they left behind, the mothers, the fathers, the husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, yes, and especially the children. All of America stands beside you in your time of sorrow. What we say today is only an inadequate expression of what we carry in our hearts. Words pale in the shadow of grief. They seem insufficient even to measure the brave sacrifice of those you loved and we so admired. Their truest testimony will not be in the words we speak, 
but in the way they led their lives and in the way they lost their lives with dedication, honor, and an unquenchable desire to explore this mysterious and beautiful universe. The best we can do is remember our seven astronauts, our Challenger 7. Remember them as they lived, bringing life and love and joy to those who knew them and pride to a nation. They came from all parts of this great country, from South Carolina to Washington State, Ohio to Mohawk, New York, Hawaii to North Carolina to Concord, New Hampshire. They were so different, yet in their mission, their quest, they held so much in common. We remember Dick Scobie, the commander who spoke the last words we heard from the Space Shuttle Challenger. He served as a fighter pilot in Vietnam, earning many medals for bravery, and later as a test pilot of advanced aircraft before joining the space program. Danger was a familiar companion, companion to Commander Scobie. We remember Michael Smith, who earned enough medals as a combat pilot to cover his chest, including the Navy Distinguished Flying Cross, three air medals, and the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry with Silver Star, in gratitude from a nation he fought to keep free. We remember Judith Resnick, known as J.R. to her friends, always smiling, always eager to make a contribution, finding beauty in the music she played on her piano in her off hours. We remember Ellison Onizuka, who was a child running barefoot through the coffee fields and macadamia groves of Hawaii, dreamed of someday traveling to the moon. Being an Eagle Scout, he said, had helped him soar to the impressive achievements of his career. We remember Ronald McNair, who said that he learned perseverance in the cotton fields of South Carolina. His dream was to live aboard the space station, performing experiments and playing his saxophone in the weightlessness of space. Well, Ron, we will miss your saxophone, and we will build your space station. We remember Gregory Jarvis on that ill-fated flight he was carrying with him a flag of his university in Buffalo, New York. A small token, he said, to the people who unlocked his future. We remember Krista McAuliffe, who captured the imagination of the entire nation, inspiring us with her pluck, her restless spirit of discovery, a teacher not just to her students, but to an entire people instilling us all with the excitement of this journey we ride into the future.